Hi, welcome to the shed. In this video, I'm talking about toilets or the lack of them. Hi, welcome back. So at the meet in July, we've organized four chemical toilets, four portal loos. You know the type, the big blue industrial, I'll, I'll, I'll put a picture up there. The big blue, styly chemical toilets, portal loos that you'll see at festivals and outdoor events and building sites all over the country. We've organized four of them. At, at the moment, as it stands, there's four. They'll be in the main field. We're gonna try and put them somewhere central in the main field. In the wood, there will be two composting toilets. We're in the process of finishing finishing them off. Um, so I think there's just the big barrels to put underneath the seats. The seats are all in. It's looking nice. Um, if you get a chance, we'll give a lick of paint on the inside so it looks a bit bright. But it's bushcraft. What can you say? So there's four chemical toilets going in the field. There's two toilets, composting toilets in the wood. And in the wood next to the composting toilets, there's a urinal for the gents. Let's try and avoid anyone whacking the old man about, shall we say, with all the kids running about. Won't be having any of that. Keep it in your pants. But what are the alternatives? Well, cat sanitation is not an alternative. And by cat sanitation, I mean digging a hole and burying it. Not an option. Don't do it. There's going to be too many people there and it's a small area. You can't do it in the field. It's the farmer's field. And we don't want you doing it in the wood. It's not big enough for that many people. We'll be ankle deep in other people's poop if you're burying anything. So don't bury it. Use the facilities. So as I say, no cat sanitation. Use the portal loose, use the composting loose. Or bring your own. And what are the options for bringing your own? Well, the first and most obvious option, and lots of people have been doing it this lockdown, is they've bought small personal um, chemical toilets, porta potties, as the Americans call them. We call them chemical toilets, but the small cube type porta potty that you know, lots of people have been buying from places like Go Outdoors, so they can get away to campsites, because a lot of the campsites, although they've been open for camping, all the toilets and shower blocks have been shut. So they've got these chemical toilets. Word of caution with these chemical toilets. There is nowhere, now I will repeat this, there is nowhere for you to empty your chemical toilet up at Camp Ball. So over the course of the weekend, if you've got a chemical toilet, you will not be able to empty it. There's nowhere to empty your chemical toilet. Now, that could be a problem if you've got one of these smaller porta potties as I say, that go outdoors with selling. I think there are 20 litre capacity. How much of that is taken up by the water that's in the toilet already, I don't know. But 20 litres is not a lot. And you will soon fill it over a weekend, especially if it's a family that's using new porta potty. Porta potty. So be aware, porta potty might not last you the weekend, depending on the size of your group and how often you want to use it. Especially if you're using it for a wee. Which brings us on to wheeze. Hmm. Whatever toilet solution you got, if you're weeing a lot into it, if you've got four people weeing into that, it will soon fill up. So what are the alternatives for wee? And there's an easy solution: pee bottle or a u portable u a portable urinal or a pee bottle. Call it what you want. I'm going to call it a pee bottle because I can't get my tongue around a portable urinal without thinking about it. I'm old. I get confused. So, pee bottles. Now, what are your options for pee bottles? If you're a man, any bottle with a wide enough neck will do. If you're a lady, hmm, choices are limited. But I'm going to show you what I use. You can buy a bottle anywhere. There's many places that will sell you a bottle. And all you got to do, as I say, if you're a gent, is find one with a wide enough neck and you're away. I would recommend buying a bottle with a screw top lift, one with a seal in it, because you don't want it leaking. So getting back to it, I bought 
a urinal bowl from Amazon. And if I can find it on Amazon again, I'll put a link in the description. I'm not saying you should buy this one, I'm just saying this is the one that I bought. I keep it in the van. And this is my portable pee bottle, my urinal. It's a screw on lid. It's a, a very tight opening, I would say. It's very, very tight, obviously. But, yes, use that. I can, I've learned to use that without getting out of my sleeping bag. It's marvellous on a cold and horrible night. But there you go. This portable urinal. Now, we have two of these because my wife can use that and not because she's got something to dangle in there. No, that'd be a bit uh, too modern for me. It comes with an attachment for the ladies. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you can work out how it's used. If you can't, <coughs> ask your mum and dad. So there you go. This type of pee bottle can be used by both men and ladies. And it does work. The wife has had to use it when we were up in Scotland. There was nowhere else to go and it was a very busy car park we were in and there was nowhere to hide. And she was desperate, so that was the first time she had to use it. And it felt, apparently it's weird for her just standing up and using it. But in an emergency, it's better than nothing. It's certainly better than wetting yourself. So a pee bottle. This can be emptied somewhere out of the way. If you were to so go for a walk up to the, round the hedge, tip it out in the hedge, or up to the wood, into the urinal, tip it into the urinal, that'll flow away to the soak away. So there's places to empty it, give it a rinse out and it's good to go again. And you're not filling your chemical toilet with pee, you can fill it with poop and it'll last longer. So urinal, urinals or pee bottles. I would recommend having a pee bottle, maybe it's more than one. I'll put a link on for that one. It's quite a good one, I've had it for a number of years now. And as I say, we've got two because they can fill up quite quickly if you've had a lot to drink. Right, what's next? So, we've talked about pee bottles. Get yourself one, very handy. And we've talked about chemical toilets. No way to empty them, but again, very handy. So what alternatives have you got now if you haven't got a chemical toilet, but you want your own facilities up there? Because like me, I have my own facilities up there. I, I don't like pooping in a hole in the woods. No, no. Far too old for that type of thing. I need my knees won't take it all that crouching. I need something to sit on. I'm gonna show you what I use and I have used up at Bob this past year. It's down here. I'm gonna show you mine. One second. This is what I use. It's a folding toilet. Yeah, it's a, just a little stool. I'll get this around the right way. It's a little stool. The toilet lid on it clips down sturdy take my weight no problem and you pop a bag in it any bag I get biodegradable ones you drop a bag in it fold it over the seat stops any mess fold it over the seat keeps it all nice and clean and hygienic sit yourself down do what you've got to do get up Antiseptic wipes, everything inside the bag, take the bag out, tie it up and put it in a bag, put it in a plastic bucket and I take it away with me and put it in a bin. When I get home I put it in the big wheelie bin outside and it's taken away to landfill or to the incinerator wherever they take it. So that's one thing and again these things, I think I paid £12 for this one off eBay. There's lots of them on eBay, lots of them on Amazon. Have a look. I'm not going to put a link down. The so easy to find. Folding toilet. That's all you've got to do. Camping toilet, folding toilet, and lots of options will appear. But as I say, once you've used it, back it up, tie it up, and put it in a bucket with a lid on. I've got a, a bucket with a lid, and I throw it in that, and it's there until I, I get home, and then I take it out. It keeps any smells away. But suppose you don't want a chemical toilet. And you don't want a folding stool. You want something that you might already have about the house. Or in the shed. We're talking buckets. Bucket toilets. Right. One second. I've got another one. 
Here's one I made earlier. This is a 20 litre plastic bucket with a lid. What makes this a suitable toilet? Yeah. Well, take the bag out. All you need to do is get your plastic bucket, whatever size. 20 litre is a nice one. It's not too low, it's not too high. Because the five litre or the five gallon bucket or 25 litre buckets, I thought were a little bit too high for me. I'm not very tall. So this is a 20 litre one. And round the top, this is 15 millimeter, or this is pipe insulation I got from B and Q a meter length for 15 millimeter pipe. I would get the next size up. I think the 15 millimeter put on is a bit tight. But get the next size up, or the 15 mil, whatever you can get. Put it round and one this 20 litre bucket, one piece is just enough. You don't even have to cut it, just put it around. And I put a bit of um duct tape on there just to hold it down until it gets its shape. It'll be fine after that. But that's quite comfortable. You can sit on that quite comfortably. And again, to use it, put your bag in, pull it over the thing, sit down, do your stuff. Tie it up. Now, this is the point. If you're doing lots of weeing there, that's going to be um, sloshy, shall we say. And it's going to start to stink quite, quite quickly. I'd avoid weeing in them. Now I know what you're going to say, but you always want a little bit of wee when doing the number two. That's true, you do. But if you have a pee bottle and you use the pee bottle for wees, when you need to go number two, you won't be weeing as much. And what I found is three or four sheets of kitchen roll dropped in the bottom will absorb a small amount of wee, or you can put some cat litter. In a handful of cat litter in or a handful of sawdust and that'll absorb liquids shall we say and stop it sloshing about then you tie it off leave it in there now you can leave the full ones in the bottom and put another clean bag in on top but i i wouldn't recommend that i'd buy two buckets make one in the toilet and have one to put the full bags in, and then you can put the clippy on lid on because obviously the lid won't go on with this on. But for taking it to and from, as I say, this thing peels off, put it in inside the bucket along with your toilet paper, hand wipes, um, antibiological hand wipes, things of to you know, toilet paper, hand wipes, things you're going to need. Leave it in the bucket and then everything's together. Now, where you're going to put it, that's up to you. You could leave it in your tent if you haven't got a big enough tent. For about £20, you can buy one of those pop up shower tents. Peg that out, put your bucket in it, and you've got your own facilities for a stay at Bob. But again, you're going to think, have to think about where you're going to store what you pass and take it home with you. There's nowhere, nowhere to take it or to leave it at Bob or to treat it at Bob. It's down to you. So we've got chemical toilets. No way they went with them. Bucket toilets. I would have two buckets. One is the toilet and one to store the doings when you've done. Uh, folding toilet seats. Again, brilliant. But have a bucket with a lid on that you can store the doings, the makings. You know what I mean? Uh, and you should be fine. For pot loos will be there. And two composting toilets. Well, there you go. Hope to see you there in July. There'll be plenty to do, plenty of people to meet, and hopefully we'll have the weather will be nice. And on an evening, we can have a sit around the fire and tell each other made-up stories and have a few babies, sing a few songs. Aye, people tend to sing. Right, see you there in July. With a bit, fingers crossed, with a bit of luck, it'll go ahead. And see you all there in July. Tatty bye.